Hey, you there. Thank you for watching and welcome to Forge Lines Forever. Today I have a 5v5 custom match here on the most amazing Naroxis map generator. So let's go ahead and introduce our teams and our players. Starting off with Team 1 here in the Northeast, ending with Team 2 in the Southwest. Starting off with Team 1, Southeast and most player in Forest Green is the best color and combination of Rye Guys. He's going as a UEF. He's going first land. To his northwest in Barbie Pink, we have Raider going first line as a Seraphim. He is a 1700. And to the west, riding at the front line for team one is Tomozilla. Tomozilla going first line. He is a Seraphim and he is a 1300 in Chevy Crimson. In Glow in the Dark Green to the northeast is Luca going first line as a Cyber. And he is a 2000 rated player, the highest rank on team one. And rounding up for Team 1 in the Red Guard slot is Maverick going first line as a UEF in Ruby Red. He is a 1200. Over Team one side of the map, they have it. two UEF, two Seraphim, and one Cybran, which means they lack Aeon technology. Starting up with Team 2's Pac-Man Yellow player is Stinky Joe going first line as a Seraphim. He is a 1000 rated player. In the middle here for Team 2 is P going first line second there. He is a Cybran. He is in... I, uh, regal purple and he is an 1800 in orange the ones to the east we have mutual out going first line as a cyber and he is a 1300 in light oak tan to the southwest is zayo going first line second air he is also a cyber and as a 2200 the highest rank on team two and in the game overall and in the regular slot we have blazer o flasher going first line second air he is a cyber and he is a 1200 he is an emerald, he, emerald green and he is again in the regular slot so for team two side of the map they have four cybrans and one seraphim which means team two does not have access to uef tech or aeon technology which means for the game overall uh, there are no players representing the aeon faction apologies to those loyal to the princess Hopefully you will enjoy the game nonetheless. Let's go ahead and take a the reclaim currently still on the map. And for 10 players, 16,000 reclaim, which is 1.6K mass to scoop up. And most of it does reside in the middle of the map. We have a decent grouping of 16, 16 there with a nice little 15 and 15 over there. And for mass pairing layouts here, let's take a look at team two side of the map. They have... Actually, have a, we have a lot to scoop up. We have one. I'll call this one two, uh, three, four, five trimex positions here for team two with a decent amount of mixes spread out here around their main base area. There are going to be high contention over these two sets of mixes here between both the teams just because they are in the middle of the map. And there's a couple of mixes in the middle as well here the northwest and southeastern corners, especially I mean, especially these two at a minimum because it is going to be the entryway that way. And there are a couple of hills to get up and down. So it looks like only a couple of plateaus are isolated. Everything else can easily be walked up to. Let's go ahead and see what our players are getting up to here. For Team 1, we see three players on the move here, two of them being the front line, one of them being yeah, further in the back here for Luker. He's shifting westward. We do see Team 2. Only two comms moving so far. Both of them are the frontline players. Oh, we do see Blazer or Flasher moving forward, so he might assist in the middle here. I would not be surprised to see Team 2's P move in as well. So it looks like currently it's going to be 1v1 with possibly a 2v1 at some point here for Team 1 on that northwestern side. We do see as well Raider moving to the middle, and we do see Zaya moving on that... Uh, southeastern edge so it looks like pretty much everybody is going to be moving out of their base for the time being we do see one player for team one maverick just going to sit in the rear guard air slot and eco up i don't blame him there he's going for air so he needs to get that t3 air headquarters online as soon as possible i do hear combat somewhere there is a nice little t1 jester online here for blazer flasher very nice Rating potential here. It is uh, the only faction available, the Cybern, that has access to the T1 gunship. There is a transport trying to land, and it does land. Looks like it even threw those engineers down. There's a nice little hunter here and a decent amount of engineers. They need to build a facility immediately. Going to go for T1 PD to try to deny this facility. There is a FAM under construction. It will finish. 
and the hunter's going to immediately try to slow that fam down to avoid the engineers. Wall sections have been started, and the T1PD does get finished off, which means that position will be denied, at least for the time being, for Tomozilla. We see a little bit of movement here to the northwest, not really a whole lot, and the southeast... A lot of open area under the control of Team 2 Zayo. Team 1's Rai guys has shifted westward instead of southward, which means it leaves a decent hole that Team 2 can exploit. I wouldn't be surprised if someone rotates over there, most likely Rai guys. We do see Raider, of course, coming into the middle as well. He might just take over here for Rai guys and Rai guys move over to the east. This could be a huge uh, opportunity for Team 2 to exploit if Team 1 does not close that up. We don't see the same amount of pressure here for Team 1's Luker. So again, there is potential for a nice little grouping of mexes here for Luka to grab. But so far, Team 2's, I mean, not okay, they're not focusing it. But at least so putting something over here is better than what's going on over here on the eastern side. We do see calm on calm action here between the teams. And it's between Ragais and Mutulao. Mutulao going for reclaim. And Ragais going for combat. Rai guys trying to again just reclaim bouncing around trying to slow down Rai guys is calm just a little bit so his nice little mantis can come in and start firing on Rai guys is calm Rai guys is a little bit under oh he's almost under 9,000 and Mutulal is just under 9,000 so if the comms keep going at it it's going to be a murder suicide there is a couple of units breaking through the front line here for Raider in the middle going after a nice little T1 mech it's not really a huge concern but it's still a hole, and there is a counter transport coming online trying to drop exactly what happened over here. The transport does get shot down, but the engineers do land, which means that facility will be started here for Raider. So it just looks like <laughs> the middle players here for both teams just kind of traded plateaus. Like, okay, oh, fine, Raider, you can have this one, but I want this one. They're like, okay, fine. We do see a couple of Zooey trying to deny these T1 facilities, but it, they probably can't hit this one because it's just too far away the engineer over here for raider wants to build this but just can't seem to do so because those units of course are just patrolling all the time it does look like there's a little bit of counterattacking going on the eastern side here for Rai guys and there's a couple of bombers also on station to assist with that as well from maverick we have tor morzilla going for gun speed and range he is a seraphim he he is trying to secure that position here. There is some movement outbound from his opponent of Stinky Joe. He's shifting a little bit northward. We could see a possible run-by opportunity like this. But the calm of Tormazila is going to come and intercept. So he does have the advantage right now that he's the only one with the gun upgrade online. And those units outbound from Raider get all the way into the main base of P. There is a nice little jester and some units outbound from Mutala to assist. And they're going to try to focus that T2 mechs, but uh, unfortunately the firepower on board those things are not that much to be able to deal with that. It looks like Zayo is actually going to be the air player here for Team 2. Team 2's uh, Blazer or Flasher kind of being a little bit more of a support role in that way. Team 1, still no T2 air facility. It probably is going to be this here pretty shortly. But Team 1 doesn't have T2 air again and the we i have seen it though that one team doesn't go t2 air first but then just blitzes the t3 so we could see that kind of similar thing but currently team two has the opportunity to go for bomber first and that could be very big or just not work out and we've again we've seen it both ways in this game the whole strap bomber rush thing was uh kind of ixnade for a little bit for a while ago just because of the firepower just because of how powerful it was that's what I was told. I didn't uh, play FAF slash to pay attention to that too much back in those days. So I had was told that by, by somebody like, look, this is, you know, it was essentially down to like a couple of seconds. It's like 10 or 15 minutes. It was like, that's it. Game's over. You just because you bomb all the re bomb all the mass and that's it. Your opponent can't build anything and then you win. So it was a definitely kind of nerf that a little bit, which is good because, you know, just having one move that can take out an entire, you know, player just instantly is not really that great and not that fun but uh, you know that's one of the reasons I love this game is the developers are constantly churning out improvements so like this isn't working we need to balance this we, I just I love that I love the uh, live serviceness of the FAF developers 
Well, thank you so much. T2 on the way here for Raider versus the Mutulal upgrade going for speed and range. Green and range going on the way here for Stinky Joe and Blazer Thrasher coming in to act as a little bit of a nice little buffer. We also have Luca coming in south as well. So it's going to be 2v2 here on this western side. This position here has been denied all of the T1 factories, but there's a lot of these AA de the Destinies, the Sky Slammers. I think it was called Destiny. And uh, they can attack ground units. Their accuracy is something to be desired, but uh, you know they can shoot at ground units. So it's, again, better than nothing. And at nine minutes, almost ten minutes on the clock, Team 2 has a slightly better map control for the time being. They have this entire southeastern corner under their control. And they have some of the northwest, but there's a lot of pushback here from Team 1. They did have a little bit more of it, but uh, there's a nice little build-up. This amount of units, trying to charge this amount of units, it's not going to go well. There's more units here. It's all Mantis versus a couple of artillery pieces as well. Those units aren't moving. Definitely not going to go Luca's way. Nano is on the way here for Tormozilla. He is Seraphim, so he can build that instantly. Unlike the Sirens that have to build the stealth upgrade first. The comm of Mutulal is being shot at by uh, a bomber. Maybe it's probably focused on the Mantis assisting him because Mantis do have the engineering suite on board to assist. Speed and range has been completed as well here for Raider. So he's a nice little T2 PD firebase starting. He does have a TMD as well. Love to see that early, early on because he can deny a couple of those... Uh, mobile missile launcher uh, spams that can happen. We do see the column of Butulau moving in and there's a nice little wall section being established here by Maverick to slow the roll of Team 2, force them into a kill box right here and also messes with the, of course, the path you have to go all the way around versus just go straight in. And in the west, we see as well Stinky Joe trying to force back Team 1. If he goes a little bit further, he could start attacking Tormozilla's Calm, but of course he has the gun upgrade as well. Overcharge kills off another tank there, and he's almost at one star of agency versus Tormozilla's about halfway to one star. In the east, we have Zaya holding off Rai Guys. Rai Guys, of course, was uh, suffering a little bit on the eastern side, but did come back. He has a little bit more uh, hills to climb, quite literally, to grab this position, but he is getting some PD online. He is a uh, UEF, so they are known for their firebasing and tankiness. And calm on calm action here in the west. Tormozilla being focused on by Stinky Joe and Blazer of Flasher. Stinky Joe in the yellow. And Tormozilla about to finish that nano upgrade. Is getting assistance from Luker. Does finish it off. 70 hit point region now. And we might see a calm getting walked down. I don't think so. Just due to the fact that it is 2v1 now. Luker did retreat. Probably should have come and assisted this, but uh, didn't want to be killed off. I don't blame him there. He is the highest ranked player on Team 1. He'd be a juicy target for Team 2 to go after. So definitely going to be aware of that. Stealth coming online here for Muchalau. Probably going to go for Nano next, just because that's pretty much the basic uh, build order there. Missile over the top here for Team 1. Going to land at this T2 Max. They tried to kill off a long time ago. They will kill that off, unfortunately, here for Team 2. And now he needs those zappers online. Going to go for another T2 Max right there. It isn't uh, ringed yet, but it was about to. Zapper will not be built in time, unfortunately, but it will protect some of these backline mixes as well. So a little bit of rating on the eco here for Team 1, but uh, it's essentially about the same mass income between the teams at the current moment. You can see it kind of fluctuates depending on uh, income for power and all of that and upgrades and whatnot. T3 Air has been completed here for Maverick. I don't see any other player going for T3 Air at the moment here for Team 1. Team 2, we have two players, possibly T3 Air. This one here for Blazer Flasher going, you know, is the main one, while we have T2 Air also online for Zayo. So he should, he not should, he can go for it. He doesn't have to currently, but it is nice to be able to say, oh, I can build just a couple of gunships and call it a day. But the uh, disadvantage that uh, Team 1's Raider is facing is the fact that Team 2 has a couple of Cybrin Viper mobile missile launchers and their missiles split. Now they don't do as much damage as the regular like whole missile, but you know, some damage is better than none. There's a Team D TML flying over top. Looks like it took out that mix. And there's another mix over top going after another T2 mix. And here's that Zapper takes out that missile. 
And it looks like Team 2 will be holding off any missile launching for the time being from Team 1. Don't see any Team D over here to the west, but there's no tactical missile launchers launching, so that's a thing. Another missile launching. Team 1's radar just kind of constantly raid here. There was a zapper going to be built, but uh, looks like it was a little bit slow on the roll. Probably need a Team D up here. would probably be better. And that missile is launching very, very quickly. Where is it? Right... There it is. Killed off 5,565 mass. Four-star veterancy has one missile currently loaded. And it might be able to grab this one. I think it's in range. Oh, yeah, that's in range. It can definitely grab that. He thinks it's dead, but it's not. Probably why he hasn't gone after it. Probably could go after mixes in here, but there are TMD now. And could go after... I mean, he could blind the radar over here, but his teammate of Rag Guys is pushing against Zio. And Zio is having to fall back due to this T1 and T2 land army and PD creep that's occurring on that eastern side. So while he had the early advantage in the now mid-game, he does not. But he, you know, of course, benefited from all of that mass, being able to upgrade his mixes in his main base. And now he has T3 land online going for some TMD as well as some brick production to again hold off the T2 units that are online. We do see Mutulao just kind of hanging out going after the uh, PD. Does get the AoE on that PD and Mutulao is now uh, facing some firepower from Raider. Raider has no nano but does have T2. Mutulao does not have T2 but has gun and is at nano so 84 hit points. Takes a nice laser to the face. That's never a good thing. And uh, still in range of that PD. Looks like he should be out of range now. Commander yeah, just right attack. out of range. We do see the units here from P coming into intercept Raider. Raiders who notices this goes, that's not a good idea. I do not like that. I love the teamwork going here between Team 2 saying, hey, you're being shot at. Let me move my units in to force back Raider. They would love a kill, but uh, these players are pretty good at this game. Though it's not going to be an easy kill, considering the fact that it's now 16 minutes and no one has died yet. Because I don't think I've ever... S well, there's probably some games where no one dies till 40, 45 minutes and then it's just a recall. I bet there are games like that. They're rare, but there's definitely games like that. We do see another push app on here from Luca in the northwest with a bunch of T2 rhinos with an assisting brick. There are some Ilshis in the mix, but uh, not very many here. So Team 2 will have to fall back for the time being. And the middle has kind of just been de facto no man's land. Not really a lot of action going on. Not even really a lot of fire basing. Uh, there's a little bit, but not really a whole lot going on. It's more just here's a couple of defenses and don't attack me kind of thing. The shield did get uh, collapsed for the time being here for Raider. And it does look like... P is going to move his forces in. Team D is uh, down as well. And it does look like Raider will have to come with this call himself. Overcharge hooks around that brick. And it uh, looks like the overcharge will just be able to save him. Brick trying to focus down the comm. Missile launching outbound going after some mexes up here. Team D is going to be strong enough to take that out. And Raider for pushes forward, but then regrets his decision. Does have a sniper bot online. Doesn't have a Tham. Not Tham. Off him. And we do see Mutualao now ref back up to full HP. He's going to move in and intercept. But we do see some miss mobile missile launchers outbound from Maverick. Those could easily be taken out. And that brick uh, does move in the face of those missiles. But there's a lot of Team 1 spam trying to body block that brick. So not really that helpful. And the column now being targeted by said missiles. And it does look like not really a whole lot happened, except units died in front of Raider's base. And all will be fine for the time being. But Ryguy's holding position. Doesn't want to push. Just kind of wants to hold his opponent at bay. He has his territory. Or his territory he feels like he deserves or owns. There's one mix down here with a nice little radar system. For some early warning. Love to see that. Would love to see T3 come online here for both teams. Because you need that Omni sooner rather than later. Nano will be started here for Raider. He desperately needs that. Especially if he's going to use his comp. But Team 1 Zuka has pushed through the front lines. Isn't content with just holding the line. But is pushing it forward. We do see Stinky Joe coming in to intercept. He does have Nano as well. So of course that is the thing. There are some Loyalists. So some EMP weapons on board. Those weapons, they can't nullify everything, but they can nullify a decent amount. 
And of course, we do see Stinky Joe with that comp coming into range. It does make these Bricks and Loyalists think, mm, that's probably not the best idea right now. Especially giving Betrancy to a commander is not always a good thing, but sometimes you just can't help it. But Bricks forcing their way forward here against Team 1's Rye Guys. And these Bricks, again, rapid fire nature that they are. And in this scenario, Bricks are the superior unit over Percy's. There are no Percy's here for Team 1. But just due to the fact that if these were all Percy's, it would take a lot longer to shoot through all these units because they fire, they might miss, they have to reload. These bricks just constantly fire, don't stop, and they're really good at taking out lower HP units. I mean, they're good at taking out higher HP units as well, but in terms of damage per second versus fire rate, if you have one target, damage per shot is more important. If you have multiple targets, ra uh, rate of fire is definitely more important. But it, again, it also depends on how many, what, you know, how many units do you have, how many units do they have, is it both kind of spam and high HP units? Like it, it, it does make a difference. But generally, single fire targets, Percy's, a multitude of targets, bricks. Bricks or Othams, Othams are kind of a mix between bricks and uh, Percy's because they have two shots that they fire or two different types of shots that they fire. Kind of similar to how the chicken has three different types of uh, fire rates. And they have a very fast, medium, and slow. And then has the ion storm. But Mutulao being forced back. So he needs to probably go. If he wants to be very aggressive with his comm, he wants to go for cloaking. He's going to just get walked down by sniper bots. And those sniper bots are shielded currently. That comm is uh, going to try to get out of range. But he is... Oh, I can't... I'll keep it... Oh, I can't see... I can't see the... Things there. Oh, oh, a couple more shots. We'll do it. Brick tries to stand in the way, but gets uh, overcharged. And Mutala will make it to safety. I don't know if it's because Raider just didn't see him. Oh, no, he sees him now. Oh, Commander oh, under attack. 2,000 hit points. Needs to get underneath that shield. Oh, he doesn't get underneath the shield. Oh, that's devastating for Mutala. He was essentially, I'd say, maybe a couple feet or a meter or something from there depending on what uh, country you're from i'm from the u.s so we say feet but uh, there is i i, I say celsius just because i like celsius it's easier it's a, hunt, a base 10 system not that at fahrenheit isn't but you know zero degrees is freezing 100 degrees is boiling i, I love uh frost punk and that's in Celsius. you can set it to fahrenheit but why would you the math is way easier to deal with in your head if it's in celsius or just in the game in general because it's in increments of 10. anyway um yeah, that's, ah, that sucks for Team 2, but he didn't die before 20 minutes, though, so I will give him that. That means at 21 minutes, Team 1's at 5 players left. Team 2 is at 4 players left. Let's take a look at the Ecos. Team 2 at 950 or so mass income. Team 1 at 920. Sorry, 920, 910, depending on uh, the what's going on with the reclaim and whatnot. And map control, I'd say it's essentially 50-50 at this point, considering that Lucre's pushing on the northwest and now... We have Zaya pushing on the s southeast and now almost to the main base of Rai Guys. Let me know down in the comments who you think is going to currently win the game if you haven't done so already. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and of course, share this video with your friends. I greatly, greatly appreciate the sharing. It's one of the ways that people discover my channel. But of course, thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. And I will see, uh, we'll, we'll see how this match turns out. I... My guess, as of right now, I don't like to be like, I'm rooting for Team 1 or Team 2 because I want to be unbiased. It's going to be close, at least for what I'm looking at right now. But I feel like Team 1 might have a slight advantage just due to the fact that Raider's being very aggressive here and forcing back Team 2. And he's focusing a lot of Team 2's attention here. And if he's smart, he's going to be building up maybe a chicken. Yep, he's even building a chicken right now. So there you go. So he's going to... And force the issue, fall back, force the issue, fall back. And Maverick coming in to assist. Mobile missile launchers moving forward. Not the best idea. But I love this sniper bot being put underneath shield coverage. I love this. For those of you who watch my Warhammer videos or even my Star Wars content, you know I'm a huge fan of shoot at your enemy when your enemy can't shoot at you kind of thing. So you stay out of their range, but you stay in your range and you do all the damage and they can't shoot back and then they're there. So it's uh, being able to save on costs 
by not having to constantly rebuild the same units is definitely a benefit. But again, like I said, please let me know down in the comments who you think is going to currently win the game. And we'll go ahead and enjoy the game as well. Of course, Luker is isolated this position here for Stinky Joe. Stinky Joe does have some PD blocking both the east and the western approach. He's building more PD to protect that. And these units honestly might just isolate themselves. Stinky Joe is still hanging out here. And it does look like the units are going to do full send it into that base. We do have some bombing runs over the top here from Team 2. But uh, this attack force grouped up with the force from Team uh, from Luker's forces in the north. There are a couple of Ilshis as well. Which makes me think that he either claimed... No, he had to have grabbed technology from somebody else. Because there's no way he just has a T1... No, sorry, Sarah from Pacific. I don't even see it. Anyway, there is a nice little whaler online as well. There's not a lot of AA in the mix. There is one uh, T2 uh, AA cannon. But uh, I don't see any of that. I mean, it's a whaler, so it does have a lot of hit points. And this force will be pushed back, at least for a little bit. There's a lot of bricks there focusing the PD. They're trying to take out, of course, the T3 mexes as well. But the shielding is still online for the time being. And Sneaky Joe getting a ton of veterancy here, almost at three stars. Actually, excuse me, is at three stars. Probably get to four, if not close to four, with all the overcharging that he's doing. Any XP, have a chicken. Says Raider asking his teammates if he ha if somebody else has some experimentals he can group up with. But this push will be stopped here by Sneaky Joe in the west. And we should see that chicken traversing the map. There it is right there. Moving into grouping with these units. And there is a shift westward here. So now that he's pushed back Team 2 a little bit here, focusing their attention here, he's going to fake and go either all the way west, which he could do, and group up with the forces from Tomozilla, or he could just go straight down this little narrow neck, this nice little uh, valley between the plateaus, whatever the heck you want to call that, and attack the Mexes here, which it might look like he's going to do. Yep, he is going to shift that direction, or at least as some of his Othams that way and maybe go west as well. I do love the, the positioning here for Team 1's forces. They can get some artillery up here, some PD up here. And there is already a Zathutham. I think that's how you say that. There's definitely Tham at the end of that, so maybe it's Zathutham. Online going in for this base here. Just a little bit, just something to annoy. Not necessarily something to just immediately eviscerate. But the Whalers now for Team 2 starting to force back Team 1. But there's more AA coming online here. And as I speak that, of course, all of those Whalers just get annihilated. Advanced Nano Repair coming on the way here for Tormozilla in his main base. Going to be very tanky with that upgrade. Stealth on the way here for Maverick. Sorry, not Stealth. Shield. Excuse me. I, I saw the S and went... That's not it. He's going for Nuke. Very interestingly. Already has an SMD. And it's already half-loaded. That... Begs the question if Team 2 has their own. No, they're not going for Nuke. But uh, we also see Zyre going into the air game as well. So two players on Team 2 going for air. Team 1 still only has the one player. And I, he must have been gifted those units over here from uh, from Azila because I do not see a Seraphim facility online for Luker. They could have just easily been gifted those over. I don't know. I don't see... Anything like that. He is building a crab. Skipped the monkey and went straight for crab. That's going to be huge for his defensive line here in the northwest. There is a monkey online here for Team 2's P as well. So P has now diverted all of his forces north. There's a huge opening that Team 1 could exploit. But there is a monkey as well online here for Zayo. Because Zayo has dual bases. He's now at 500 mass income per second. So a lot of mass he can funnel into different projects. And he is a 2200, so he has the APM to manage all of that. It's really hard to quantify APM because it depends on you know, so many different factors of do you have enough sleep, did you eat, are you hydrated, what time of the day it is, how long you've been playing for, is this your first match, your eighth match of the day, um, are you stressed out about other things. Like There's so many factors that go into APM. It's You would need pro most likely a quantum computer to probably process all that information at once. To be able to accurately, ca well, roughly accurately calculate that. But ASFs are moving in to go after all of these Corsairs. I don't see why. Maybe he wants to just deny the attack power. But uh, there is a 
Crab coming down the line. It does get pinged. A lot of ASFs got killed off in that engagement. And that monkey will retreat. So I don't understand that. There is a strap bomber rotating over here to assist, but that's going to be called off as well. And we see more artillery landing here against this position here for P. And Strat Bomber actually, sorry, focused on the Monkey Lord. Didn't even notice this one right here. It's going to be sniped over here from the west. And this is not a little sniper bot. T2 Max is on the main target. He could go after the comm. If he gets close enough, he could get the comm of Tormazila. But he does have, of course, uh, Gun Online is going for Nano. Obvious troll is obvious. Yes, th thank you for the obvious troll is obvious name here. I de definitely appreciate it. It's funny, so I'm all the way zoomed out here. It's easier to read it like this than it is to read it like this. I don't know what it is, maybe because, I don't know just how it does the texting, but Overcharge immediately kills that monkey off. Almost gets a T3 Pigeon, to be fair, but almost, only comes in horseshoes and hand grenades. So there's that for you. In the east, very sparse forces here for right guys. Looks like he's more focused on his nuke. Actually, that's not nuke. That's uh, that's Maverick focused on his nuke. His nuke is uh, still building, but he's focused on air. It's 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 there if he needs it, but he's not focusing on it, kind of thing. But we do see Rat guys transitioning a little bit into air, so we could see a play for that. There's that monkey load online now for Luker. Don't see any uh, other experimentals here for Team One. I mean, I'm kind of surprised that Tormazida doesn't go for chicken. He might build a chicken now with that wreck, and he is doing that as we speak. So there's that. And it's very quiet now. Dual Monkey Lords online here for Zayo. We see dual chickens online. Chickens will win that fight every day of the week. 2v2, especially if that chicken just runs straight into the face of those monkeys. Strap Bomber gets killed off, lands on that little uh, cliffside there. It's going to be annoying just it sitting there, but uh, you can get to that. And, uh, I mean... It's very quiet. There is an attack brewing in the northwest once again here for Team 1's Luker. We could see this northern side be the collapse of Team 2 if Team 2 is not careful enough. We do see a monkey. Of course, there's more and more bricks being funneled, more and more re reinforcements over here. We even have the comma P rotating a little bit northward as well. Team 2, I mean, this is their big hole. If they're exposing this whole flank, they know either Team 1's not going to... Well, they can't know 100%, but... Team 1's not going to attack, or they know that Zayo has it covered, which I feel like Zayo has it covered, especially if he's just using some Corsairs to go after Percy's. That's never a good sign, as you just watch T3 units be eviscerated by T2 fighter bombers. But there's the fight. It's inbound. And it's going to be Cybern v. Cybern. And that Megalith does have the range advantage. The Monkey Lord needs to get closer. The Monkey Lord, surprisingly, could have just sat over here and waited a little bit kind of rotated around but uh, then you have the pathfinding and all that there goes the fight it's going to engage get some nice little cinematic shots the monkey focusing of course on the bricks because it's lasers in range of those there are some bricks going to come in on this side the crab going to start to retreat there are enough bricks to probably kill the crab but the monkey lord is taking a ton of shots to the face the monkey lord is now in range of said crab but those hit points on board that monkey lord definitely leave something to be desired but the bricks are the main force here they are in range. We do see some whalers coming in. They do have some AA, so ASFs can't just instantly come in and kill them. But there's a ton of support in the back here from the, the bouncers. I love that play because it draws the gunships in, attacking the gunship, and then they go, nah, don't like that. And then the ASFs come in to act as a ca cannon fodder, essentially. That crab will die. It will be on Team 2's doorstep. They will handedly grab that. And that's a nice little donation here for Team 2 to scoop up. Uh, I don't see any other thing going on here for Team 1 except that nuke does get pinged. Which means Team 2 knows that it exists. And it is a third of the way loaded. Does Team 2 have accurate SMD defense? Well, no. No. And yes. So that side will be fine. But essentially, Zayo might be the target to go after. Either one of his bases. Most likely, the air grid would be more beneficial. He is pumping out crabs, so getting a high concentration of mass points would definitely be beneficial. There's one, two, three, four here. Yeah, there's the fifth one over here. Then we have one, two, three, four, five. So probably a nuke actually on top of that air headquarters would kill off 
five, actually maybe six max points. That would be a ton of mass for Zaya to lose. That's probably where that nuke is going to go if he hasn't already given a target. Firebase here isn't really that important. Nothing really else is that important. You could probably take out some of P's forces and infrastructure, but honestly, for the most part, Zayo is the bigger threat here for Team 1 to deal with. They could try to go after the air grid here for Blazer or Flasher, but I uh, just don't see that. In the case, SMD is built, so if Team 1 wants to launch that sooner rather than later will be the opportune moment. There's a little bit of an ASF fight going over here, but doesn't really materialize into much of anything. All those Corsairs get annihilated once again by those ASF. So Team 2 is Blazer Flasher wants no bombers. No soup for you. No. <laughs> no bombers. Uh, having a, for some reason, I'm having a good day today. Even though I've, I'm working nights now for the next two weeks. So I've had to flop, flip flop my body. My sleep schedule from day work to since you know normal like eight to five, nine to five, to a uh, eight to four. So essentially, the almost the same amount of time. Just instead of it being eight a.m. to eight p.m., it's now eight p.m. to eight a.m. But which is a little rough. But uh, I am a night owl for the most part, so switching it isn't too bad. And normally I do stay up till about one or two on the weekends anyway. So working a couple more hours and that being the normal schedule isn't too bad. But of course it does mess with you a little bit. Your body takes a little bit to get used to it. We have a chicken on chicken fight with a monkey coming in to assist here from Team 1. And there is a crab and monkey fight with another additional crab. It's three chickens versus two crabs and two monkeys. Not everything is currently in range. That crab is receiving a brunt of the firepower. But that monkey... Oh, hello. That don't know what happened with that. I got zoomed in. Crab's going to try to get out of range. Unfortunately, it does not. But now the second crab is in range. And the two monkeys will come shortly into range. So Team 1 has lost an experimental. Team 2 has as well. Chicken underneath shield tar coverage targeting the Monkey Lord first. That's probably the better bet. Kill off the unit. You know you can kill off. And then come in with support later. ASF's engage once again. Team 2 has secured this position. And Nuke will launch. It's launching on this position. There is an SMD. It is not loaded. This SMD was also not loaded. Could have gone for the rearguard air slot for either of those. So, but, uh, you know, you go for the surefire bet. And it's still going to take out a lot of mass and whatnot, so it's not a terrible loss. But not a terrible thing to target that. Tons of bricks on this side of the map here for Team 2. And that crab is no longer in range. So, definitely the best. And there goes that nuke flying overhead in this nice little warhead. It's a decent-sized missile, to be fair. And SMD comes online as well, but a little too late for that. Shit, crab, not chicken. Crab going to just suffer gonna be fine for now smd was thankfully not destroyed here for zio which means that will be able to be rebuilt not built but continue to be built and uh, loaded and all that not have to rebuild it so definitely a plus for him and that crab not crab that chicken is uh gonna kill off some of these bricks not all of them but some of them and this crab of course is staying at range at one star of efficiency super tanky unit super super tanky unit tankier than the Galactic Colossus, but then again, I wish the developers would just give the Colossus 100,000 hit points and not 99,999. Don't know why that's the case. There's probably a reason for it. Don't know what it is. I would employ them just to add the 1 HP. I don't know if that 1 HP makes a difference. I would hope not. But uh, I never know. Second nuke online. This time it's out from Raider. So Team 1 trying to end the game with nukes and now a satellite. It killed off 35,000. Okay, that's a decent amount of mass killed off by that nuke. It's not a lot, but 35,000 is a decent amount. We do have some Corsairs running over top going after that crab. Crab, of course, uh, this kind of goes, and that was weird. What was that on the top of my head? We're back, and these uh, Perseus are being pushed back. Team 2, I mean, it's, Zayo is becoming the bigger contender here for MVP. But we'll, we will see. He is the 2200. He is, I don't want to say the favorite to win, but he definitely has, uh, you know, has a little bit boost in that regard. But Team 1 could flip it around with the nukes, and that could make the difference as well. We will just have to see. Let's see this on the beach. I forget what that was. I don't see any other things from Team 1. T2 Air just pumping out here for Lucre. That's a couple of Team need to protect himself, as well as an SMD for himself and his teammate. 
Two to one air, says Maverick. Yep, you. Why, says Maverick. Cool air, says P. Because uh, why not? That's what I would say. I mean, if you can take out a theater of war very easily by just building more and holding off with what you got. I'm 1,200. Well, I mean, Luker could have come and assist. Maverick's a little bit salty about that probably. He's like, I'm only at 1,200. Why? Why? T3 mix is Mutalel. Oh, you could probably take that out. Yeah, it's right there. And there's a couple of T3 mixes as well here. So they could easily grab that position. Luker's still benefiting from that position for the time being. He is outproducing uh, Team 2 Zio just by a little bit. Not by a lot, but, you know, 720 to 660 is a decent chunk. And, again, Maverick's just complaining about it being a 2v1. They have two nukes. I mean, Team 1 does have two nukes. Team 2 doesn't have any. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, maybe Aber maybe to win air. I mean, team, team 1 could do two things. They could just pump out a bunch of ASF, or they could build a bunch of AA. Both work. So... We do see that push on the ground, and not only is Team 2 going dual air, they're also going for a huge ground push. Look at this. Right Guys is just suffering here on this eastern side. We do have a couple of gunships, a couple being actually one because it was just killed off, and uh, I cannot count. We do have more chickens in the middle here for Tormorzilla going after a crab. Crab will kill off that first chicken. Uh, that chicken should actually just block forward at this point. Do love the dual T3 shields to assist with... You know, again, 10,000 hit points, a decent amount of firepower to just negate. Crab does actually not get that just be because of those shields. And so good move on that. Still, Maverick, okay, Maverick, I understand you're a little annoyed, but uh, there's only so much you can do about it. So. I mean, I get it. I completely understand. But at the same time, it's like there's only there's only so much you can do. I don't know, again, I don't know if there's an agreement beforehand, don't know any of that, but in terms of the game, I mean, Team 2, you know, transitioned to, to air and assisted that, and now they have air dominance, and it's making a huge difference. Air might be the deciding factor for this game, or the nukes might be the deciding factor, but uh, it looks like one of the nukes was actually killed off, so no, there's only one nuke left, that is Maverick, and it's going to load once again. Unfortunately, now for Team 1, there's not really a lot of high-value targets to go after. Bug. I'm not a fan of the bug. I'm not a huge fan of it. I I, I know it's pretty SAM-resistant, but still, there's two Megas and a Monkey Lord. Uh, I do love the man in the chair here from Mutalao. Sadly, he was killed off at 20 minutes, but he's been very helpful with saying, Hey, there's stuff here. Hey, there's stuff here. Hey, you should go over there. Hey, there's this. I, I love that because there's so much to focus on and keep track of. It's hard to keep track of everything, especially, for, I mean, sent for anyone, regardless if they're 100, 1,000, 2,000, whatever the case may be, it's really hard to keep track of everything. So someone being like, hey, you should help here. Or, hey, you should go over there. Or, hey, there's, there's like this giant army moving. Do not move your forces, that kind of thing. And that crab actually just going to walk down the rest of these units here from Strategic Team 2. Attack. And Luke are pushing with dual crab. Is going to face a bug here pretty shortly. Another nuke is outbound here from Maverick. Where is it going? I don't see the lines anymore, so it already got five. Oh, no, there it is. There it is. It's going after this. It's going straight after P. Just completely targeted. The SMD is online, though. But, yeah, look at that. The, the icon was right on top of him. He's going for T3 artillery as we speak. That nuke sailing overhead. I wonder if P's going to move. And just gets shot down anyways by this facility over here. So multiple SMDs online. Love to see it hit from Team 2. They knocked out Team 1's advantage in the nuclear depart nuclear department. So, you know. Now it's starting to favor Team 2 a little bit. I think I'm going to speed it up a little bit just due to the fact that it is shaping up to be Team 2's game. I think the... Not mistake, but... One of the disadvantages that Team 1 started off with, at least at the 20-minute mark, was killing off Mutulao. It gave Zayo a ton of eco. And had he been over here, it probably wouldn't have been as much of an issue because he'd be going back and forth, back and forth, you know, like going over here and then going over there. But since Zayo was on the, essentially the same side as Mutulao, it was very easy for him to micro that side of the map already. 
And again, that's the, that is the downside with full share slash partial share is the fact that if you kill a player off, that's a ton of eco you're giving to somebody else. So you just got to be really careful with it. And here comes the artillery fire. One artillery is not going to be enough. Going to be a little bit more than that, especially if it misses like that. We do have rat guys over there in the corner. Just kind of hanging out. The GG, thanks for the game. Good luck, have fun. Looks like Mutulao might have to leave. Uh, but, uh, you know, at least he did assist when he had the time to be able to do so. So love to see that. So, again, man in the chair. Very, very important role. So you're not out of this game. It's kind of like bar where you're not out of the game even if your calm dies. But uh, in that game, you could get your calm back and you're still technically in the game. And this, in this uh, Force Alliance Forever, if you lose your calm, you're out, but you can still assist. Kind of weird how that works. But uh, three bugs are being focused by the ASF from Mortozilla. He's going for air, trying to assist his teammate in the air. So it's not 2v1, it's 2v2 now. Does have a huge hero to climb, but... They're not out of this yet, but there's a lot of experimentals on the field here for Team 1. I'm oh, sorry, for Team 2. We have five. It's probably not actually five. It's probably three. three but I wish they didn't count these two because they're not at, And he's going for Scathus because why not? Why not go for Scathus? We do see Cybrans. Uh, the Cybran bugs just going after Raider. Raider not underneath shield coverage. That's definitely a mistake. Team 1 loses the first player of their game of the game at 42 minutes. First player on their side of the match on this game. And here come those ASFs moving in. And those gunships are targeting that fat boy. Once the fat boy is dead, they might go after the nuke. The laser is online here for Maverick. Those bugs actually being very conservative. They're not pushing as far in as I would expect here from Team 2. It's being very cautious about it. And uh, artillery lands... Takes out a P-Gen, takes out the SMD, which that's got to hurt. But uh, luckily for them, Team 2 does not have a nuke online, at least not that I notice. They're going for Scathis, so that's also a thing. There is another push app on here from Team 1. We have one, two, three, four chickens. Sorry, four, four crabs, two chickens, and a partridge in a pear tree. But we, more importantly, have the Seraphim Commander of Tormorzilla with his... Advanced regen calm with nano, so he is very, very tanky with these uh, four crabs. If the crabs stick with him, not that they're invincible, but it's going to take a while to chew through all those hit points. And we have some mobile shields, some nice, nice uh, bricks as well. And this is huge. This might be what Team 1 needs to come back into this game of taking out the Western approach. And uh, Kill Pigeon says, right, guys. Oh, probably talking about the the defense satellite. Ah, uh, Team Two Sayo notices the satellite overhead and goes, "I don't like that." He's targeting the commander, and honestly, that is a smart play. Trying to take out the highest rated player. Oh, he just needs to get under his shield coverage. T3 shield is being built as we speak. He still has 7,000 hit points, and will it be like Mutual? I'm, honestly, I'm gonna have to split it because we got to see this attack in the in the northwest approaching. There we go. Let's move back here. Okay. He should be good. Yeah, he's good. So he's good to retreat. Obviously, Team 1 now knows about said uh, Scathus. But now we have four, sorry, five bugs on approach. And uh, where is the calm? Of, oh, he's back here. And he's letting his teammate of Lucre lead. He should be sitting right about here underneath the shield coverage, assisting the region of those crabs and here comes a crab here from P this is this is probably the big fight of the game so far and both those chickens are down here for team two but here come the five bugs inbound and guess who they're targeting they're targeting the seraphim commander of Tomarzila he is the threat with that advanced region 270 hit points region a second on board that commander and the bugs now not focusing him focusing on the megaliths and like I said, should be focused. Okay, now they, they go back into the calm. Calm is falling. Those 270 trying to keep him alive for as long as possible. And there he goes. Team 1 loses another player at 44 minutes. And those crabs are getting into the main base here for P and for Team 2's Stinky Joe. Stinky Joe building a uh, artillery piece. But that attack does peter out, unfortunately, here. 
And I don't know why you're seeing it twice. It's probably uh, into there. There we go. And uh, that it was shaping up to be very, very big here for Team 1. But those five bugs, they came in and just ripped everything apart. Now, that's the, that's the thing with bugs. And the thing with most things in this game is one is not great. Well, it's, it, it depends on the situation, but most of the part, one is not great. Five? Well, five is pretty good. SMD is the main target, and they will take that one out. Unfortunately, there is another one over here. And Mega Turret. Uh, that's, that's funny. That chicken trying to go after the second disruptor that's being built, but not going to go anywhere. And this uh, crab will die as well. Skathis is almost online here for Team 2. And that, uh, that artillery base up here actually turning turning through that uh, crab. We have Rye Guy starting teleporter. And Nuke about to load again. Second uh, satellite is underway. Luca trying to spam out those crabs as well. Nuke says uh, Team 1. Where nuke this or there is a nuke? I think he's saying nuke this. SMD is online, but unfortunately that SMD will cover the entirety of Team 2's backline. You'd have to essentially have the nuke over here or over here, which neither of Team 1 have. So that nuke will not land, unfortunately, for them. And at 46 minutes, uh, it's starting to shape up like Team 2's game. Nuke will launch. It is going to launch on this position. P does move, but like I said, his SMD is fine. His, five, his uh, teammates, five bucks, are just kind of hanging out. One at uh, four star veteran scene. Looks like everybody else at uh, one, two, three. And there goes that nuke sailing overhead. Oh, I didn't do the kaboom. Oh, that's... All right, kaboom. I forgot to do that. I apologize. Maybe I did it. Maybe I didn't. I don't know. There goes that uh, SMD launch him. There it goes. Shoots that uh, missile down. And it's not looking good. Scathis is done, says Raider. And yes, it is. And there it goes. It's launching at, I was assuming, Maverick or Luker. Most likely Luker, I think, based on the trajectory. Uh, scout, please, says P. Oh, yeah, scouting uh, Luker is what it's looking at. And that scat this shot should be coming in pretty shortly. There it goes. The watering can cannon of a uh, of an artillery piece, but it does do a very good job of taking out a lot of spread out targets, not necessarily a single target. It still can do that, but it, it when you compare the scat this with the Maver, I mean, the Maver's designed for you have a base, it's going to die. Cause, or like you have an artillery piece inside of a big base, it's going to die. Versus you have a base, it's going to die eventually. And uh, there goes that. Ooh, ooh, there was a natural coverage there. Ooh, all that goes up in smoke. It hurts. It hurts watching big air grids. I mean, it's fun, but also it hurts because it's just like all of the power, that, like all of that went into it, and it just gets ripped to shreds by uh, Scathis. And Luca's actually kind of... He, teetering on the negative income for energy so needs to get that sorted getting some uh, runoff from his teammates but tactical missile is done here for are you going for teleportation with a billy nuke that will be interesting can we collect enough money to buy blazer a new piece a new cpu oh is he just having struggles over there he's building a he's building a scathis because why not oh they're probably talking about how it's lagging most likely a little bit i would assume but uh again i don't obviously there's the stat before you play a match of like how your pc is rated for fav but uh there's another attack outbound from luca here and it's going after whatever it can go after down here but again five bugs i will repeat the statement five bugs are online and uh in this case bugs are definitely gonna be worth it but there's a lot of aa both Cybern and Seraphim, and those lightning tanks are activating. Those hit points are getting ripped to shreds, though. Oh, that was a chunk. Oh, that was another chunk. Ooh, ooh, look at that. Just look at those chunks get just annihilated off those off that solar river. But uh, all the AA is gone now, so that one is fine. Grab gets defeated. Monkeywood comes in, takes out the supply mines, so the little support. Can y'all stop donating mass? Says P. 
Is it because they can't handle it, probably? Team 2 at 580,000 mass reclaimed. Team 1 at half that. You can kind of see what side of the map fueled the other side of the map. But Skath is now reigning on Maverick's base. Tactical nuke is established here. Or is establishing here for Rai guys. Maverick has still has his nuke and both of his satellites, but uh, not for long. Uh, I wouldn't say that it does look like Luca Control K, seeing that the game is over for him and his team. But this will donate all the mass to Maverick. But uh, that uh, there goes one scat. This. Nope. One more shot. Nope. Still alive. But the attack on the uh, front lines is uh, happening here for Team Two. No, I would not. I would not say that. Right guys, going for the gun upgrade, and there goes the rest of Maverick's base and loses his Novaks, and he just control case. He's done, done with the game, leaving Right guys the sole remaining player of Team One. And oh, he's gonna teleport. Okay, okay, hold on. He, oh. Where is he going? Where, sir, where are you going? You're going somewhere. Hold on. Oh, no, he's loading the missile. He's not going anywhere. Sorry, he's loading the missile. 2200 air against me, 2v1. Why am I not surprised? I mean, please don't kill me yet. I'm trying something, says Rag Eyes. Let's see if he does get killed off here. I don't know what he... Is he going to try to teleport Billy Nuke? He can't get P, he can't get Zio, he can't get Blazer or Flasher, he can't get Stinky Joe. They're, under, they're all underneath shield coverage, so I don't see that realistically happening. They don't know where the comm is. They're, they might assume it's right here, but you never know. They're just taking out all the infrastructure right now. Okay, his missile has been built. Where are you going, sir? Where are you going? Okay, there goes the teleportation. It has been activated. And Rascoms explode in both of my ears because I spin around the, uh, the view. Let's see. I mean, the balance is 93%. It's pretty good, to be fair. Where is he going? He's teleporting right here. Let's see if Team 2 notices. I can see it, obviously, because it's in view. I'm, I'm just as uh, interested as probably most of you what Rag Eyes is doing. We'll actually probably slow it down. There it goes. So he launches the uh, Billy Nuke against the other mass fab on the other side of the shield generator. Destroys that and kills himself in the process. <laughs> Oh, uh, that one. <laughs> Ta da! <laughs> oh, that was good. I gotta give Rye Guys that. That made me laugh. That's real. Obviously, that made that was really funny. Uh, he's like, I want to try something. Everyone's like, okay. And then, uh, yep. So it takes out the Mass Fab. It obviously cascades and kills him because he'd be standing next to a P Gen and a Mass Fab. But, uh, yeah, the very explosive way to end the game. And it is a victory here for Team 2. They lost one player, Mutilal. But, essentially, the death of Mutilal propelled Zayo forward and allowed him to really conquer the southeastern section, assist in the air game. Obviously, he went for Skathis. It wasn't super important, but, uh, you know, might as well. But, again, let me know down in the comments who you think is the MVP of the match. I think uh, the man of the match, or slash the man in the chair, goes to Mutilal, of course. We have, I think, MVP. I want to say that. Oh, it's hard. Because Z uh, Zayo did a really good job, of course, on the southeastern side. We had Blazer Flash did a pretty good job with the air. P did a pretty good job with rotating between the middle and the northwest. I feel like P's movement of just letting Zao just control this position and rotating northward definitely saved Team 1. So I feel like maybe P deserves it, or I don't know, Stinky Joe also did a very good job, considering he was facing a 2,000-rated player, and he's a 1,000-rated player. I think underrated definitely goes to Stinky Joe, but it's kind of hard for MVP. So let me know down in the comments who you think MVP is, but I think maybe P ekes it out just a little bit. 
But again, thank you so much for watching. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and of course, share this video with anyone, everyone, and especially your pets. And I will see all of you in the next one.